Hello, you got Nicole here and I am so excited to tackle one of our members brands today. We're going to take a look at the Yarn Underground's logo and I'm going to explain to you guys kind of what we've got going on and what I am going to be doing for her. But essentially the goal of this lesson is that we want to take an existing brand uh, and then expand the logo type so that way she has something that is a little bit more usable and versatile for her overall branding and um, design. Here is the brand that we are talking about here. This is her current logo. That, and up until this point, she's pretty much done everything on her own. Um, it's all been DIY'd. It looks like she had somebody create this cute little illustration of her store. Uh, but in general, it is there, this is a little bit problematic because she isn't able to really, it's not versatile enough to be able to work in different ways. Um, you couldn't use this on like an Instagram icon or anything like that. And so ultimately what my goal is, is to create a logo set for her that um, holds the integrity of her existing brand, um, but also it we have multiple versions to use for the different uses that a business has to have. So uh, here are some other things. She's been working on her uh, little brand board here. So this is what she has so far. And um, so these two logo options, we have, you know, there's a little bit of limitations that, that we're facing with these. Um, but we've cho chosen some colors to start with. I'm going to show you, this is a pre-existing graphic that they've used on other things. And, um, here is, uh, I think a, like a little banner or something that they've used on something. And then these are just all of the she was so awesome just getting me everything that I could possibly need here. So um, this is a PNG. Everything I think is a image. I don't think I have, I think this does have a transparent background, but um, we don't have any vectors. And so that is our first problem. There's no vectors, um, which means that the file type is infinitely scalable. We want to make sure that we are able to you know, scale, change the colors, vectors give us that ability. Otherwise, if we're dealing with PNGs or JPEGs or something, then we're dealing with pixels, which means that when you, um, they could only be the size that they are. When you make them larger, you start getting pixelation and it starts really, um, kind of getting in the way of your quality. So, uh, okay. So what we're going to do, uh, I have some basics, uh, to get me started, I know what fonts it is, they, that she's using and whatnot. We're going to kind of just recreate the logo from scratch. I'm going to be using Illustrator because uh, that is what I'm the most comfortable in. But uh, if you wanted to do something similar with your logo, you could totally do this in Canva. Uh, it's just I'm a little bit more fluent in Illustrator. So I'm going to go ahead and embed that. Um, okay, so to start off, I know that her font is uh, Impact. So I'm going to go ahead and just type out everything in impact. So ultimately when we are doing a rebrand or some kind of uh, situation where we want to stay, we want to stay recognizable, right? So unless you're doing a full rebrand where it's a complete overhaul, you want everything completely new, uh, that is a commitment because you have to make sure that you're changing it on your signage, that you're changing your business cards, that everywhere it exists, that you're replacing it and really fully committing to a rebrand. This is what I would say is something of like a, I don't know, like a glow up because we want to keep the integrity of the existing brand. She doesn't want to change any of her signage or anything, uh, but ultimately we can make small changes here and there and have an existing existing logo files that aren't really going to hurt the integrity or recognition of the existing brand because we still want it to be recognizable so ultimately the goal here isn't to erase her brand or start over the goal here is to give her some more versatility in her logo files so okay i'm gonna start i typed it all out here um and then we might all, i'm gonna go ahead and make a copy of that because i need to be able to outline this text and create images essentially so that way I am able to kind of play with what we were already working with here so if I was going to uh, create her existing logo this is what kind of what I, this is what I do I don't know if it's the right way to do it but it works if 
Okay, so this is what we have existing already for her logo. So I wanna play around with a couple of different options here. We wanna think about what is the most important thing about this and yarn is essentially what the the uh, business is. So the idea of making yarn larger is interesting to me. Um, the thing about making different parts uh, larger with uppercase and lowercase is that you deal with um, they are not all the same type height. So see how this is very squared and this has, you know, very tall capital and then lowercase letters. You might run into some more, uh, issues with uppercase, lowercase. So I usually like to kind of play with the idea of if I'm using something bold like this, trying to do all caps because it does it makes it more squared off it's a little bit easier but in general I'm not loving this font in all caps I don't know why it just doesn't look very sophisticated I don't know it's just not so a similar font if I wanted to change it but make it um, fairly similar Anton is quite similar and I like that uppercase better I just feel like it's got a little bit better uh, space between the letters. It just, I don't, overall, it just looks a little bit more interesting as an all uppercase option. So I'm going to maybe replace that. Um, and then I would be really interested to play with the idea of something like a little bit of a lighter case for underground. And so looking at her other fonts that she has here, I'm not super loving this PT Serif. I think she is pretty open to me changing the fonts as well. Um, if we wanted to try Montserrat, I do like Montserrat for like a really similar or really simple, uh, it is hard for me to talk and work. Oh my goodness. Um, a really s simple sans serif font. Um, and I like this light case this is kind of nice um so really when i'm creating logo ideas i like to i call these sketches it's just like i just kind of make copies and play with things before i really start getting too attached So when I can get my ideas out like this, it helps me decide the fonts that I want to use because like if, if for instance, if I chose a font, but it didn't work well in, in a circle, but I like kind of have this idea of doing something in a circle, then I want to test that out and see if it works. Oops. So something about choosing font weights, we want to make sure that it feels related and it feels intentional. And I think that that is the best way to, to kind of gauge it is to look at if I was going to use this, I don't think I'm going to use this, this font in particular, but I want to make sure that the thickness of the thinnest area is not this, that this is not thinner. 
I'm really picky about choosing fonts, and so I definitely take my time. Okay, so at this point, we have kind of lost the integrity of the original logo. I don't feel like they're completely, I don't know, those are really different. And so I might want to bring it back or maybe try to see if we can't get yarn in one of these taller fonts. Let's try it now. And notice we're also still just working on the, the type only. Um, I like we're not introducing any icons or anything yet. Um, this is the way that I like to work because I think that when we get start working in color and we start working in like with graphics and clip art and stuff like that, we get a little distracted and we start like kind of ignoring the importance of the type working. And so I like to make sure that that the type can stand alone before I add anything else to it. Um, so I really like to workshop that, make sure that I'm, I'm super happy with the logo before I'm changing anything. Okay, so so far I'm liking this version the best. I'm gonna keep on going here. So already this is a little, we're working with something a little bit more balanced. Um, maybe I try doing something more like this centered orientation. Okay, so as far as icons go, I like uh, going to vector stock to get started. I mean, they even have some options for like logo, like if you wanted to use like a logo template. Um, I mean, I'm weary to use them just because I get a little bit nervous um, about someone else having the same thing. Um, these are cute. I like these little icons. Those are really cute. Okay, let's look back at the, her original yarn ball. Keep that up for reference. And I don't know that she really cares about having the same one, like the same style, or even having one at all. Um, I really like those little cute, simple, Vectors. Those are really cute, those icons. I mean, this kind of looks a little bit similar. I also want to keep in mind that sketch of her store because she's still going to be using that as well. I just want to detach it from the logo so she doesn't feel so trapped uh, that she needs to keep it as part of the logo. Okay, these little icons are cute. Not for the logo, but maybe for like Instagram highlights or something. Okay, so when I'm not super sure if something's gonna work, um, I will just either uh, download the JPEG preview or I'll just kind of screenshot it and pull it into my Illustrator. And it just kind of helps me imagine what it would look like. Cause I was like kind of imagining one of these would be like inside of the circle. I don't know, and then I'm like seeing it next to this and I don't like it as much. And it makes me want this to be a thicker font. But I don't know, that's kind of cute though. Okay, so if we like this, then it's the same thing with the with the thickness and thinness. We want to make sure that the thickness of this maintains the integrity of the rest of the logo. So I'm just always really careful with that. 
Um, you can do a little bit of a stroke sometimes, just uh, like a 0 0.25. Um, like that doesn't... Maybe that will help. Oh yeah, that doesn't look... That looks better. And maybe we bring this to a bold. And to me in general, this is feeling more aligned with the original logo. So maybe that's the move just to keep the integrity of the original logo without it feeling too different. Well, maybe we buy that pack then. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, let's pull in her little store. Because at one point we were in our membership, we were talking about her store graphic, you know, maybe having like a yarn ball in the tree or something like that, just to incorporate more of the yarn. I don't know if that's a good idea. Um, in general, this just, it does feel a lot softer than this. Um, this yarn ball is feeling more aligned to me as far as the thickness of the overall fonts um, and just the overall integrity of the logo and the design feels more aligned. Um, but this could exist as a graphic and so that way it can be nice and large because when it's large it doesn't feel so different. And really, we could even reimagine this to where we use the new logo on the store. So there's like, there's fun ways to kind of incorporate it. It's like you just never know until you try it. <laughs> See, it's just so much thicker. Maybe we could find a thinner yarn ball. Let's, let's look a little bit. Because if we did something a little bit more hand-drawn, then that might actually work. I don't like when there's not a lot of white space in the negative space because when you shrink it down, Okay, so I'm just trying to explore the idea of the tree being yarn just because it was something that we had brought up and I want to know that it is or is not a good idea. So, you know, spending a little bit too much time figuring it out. And maybe we just redraw it in the same, in the same like configuration. I mean, that's pretty cute actually, because then we could just trace this. So that way it matches this and then draw some little knitty needles. So if we were going to buy any like accompanying clip art to go with what we already purchased, like say we liked this thing or something, we want to make sure that it matches the same integrity, same thing, like the same line weight, same thickness, the same style of illustration. Okay, these are cute. I feel like she could totally use this pack. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and buy that for her too. Um, and we will have... Some fun with these. Okay, so those went in my downloads. All of the things I bought, including the ones I didn't really want. Okay, so now I need to make some decisions about which icon is going to be like our signature icon. I was testing it out with this one originally, um, but I don't know, I know I'm kinda, I like this little loop, it's cute.
And to me, that feels like it's going to be a lot more versatile. Just trying to think of a way to make underground a little bit more condensed. Like maybe as an alternate, like if you wanted to have another version of the logo that was a little bit different. Like this is kind of a cute idea again. And all of it feels related, which is important. I love myself a little circular logo. Like... Can we make it so like the yarn like came out of this thing? Maybe our little needle could come out. So we've got a long version, stacked version, another stacked version, a stacked version of the old logo. Is it on this one yet? Yeah, I still don't like this one. I think we should get rid of this one. When in doubt, simplify. Okay, so if the client's uh, black is not a real black, then I usually go and select their actual black. Um, so hers is a little bit of this like bluey black. Although I do think she also does a real black. So, no, that looks nice though. That looks nice and soft. Um, okay, and so I'm gonna select anything that is this old black. Select same fill color. And so that will select all of these. We're gonna make sure everything's updated to her black. Um, don't think that. There's so many different types of black that you have to make sure. Same fill color, okay. And then this looks like it's different. So same fill color. There we go. Boop. Okay. All right. I think we're good. That looks good. Okay. So then we're going to make sure these are all grouped together with e themselves. Each logo should be its own. Whoops. Okay. 
And then, um, okay, so then we're gonna take all of our one color design. I need to clean this up. All of our one color designs here, I'm gonna copy and paste those. And I am going to make white versions of them. I actually usually like to just do them on my artboard. I think I can delete these. I usually like to just put them on my artboard um, and then make them white. <clears throat> so that way I can make sure that we don't have any issues with the backgrounds or anything like that. Um, okay, so I have everything we, we need here. We've got our two color logos here, one color logo here um, in a black, and then a one color white. Okay, so then I am going to, this is my favorite thing, and I just recently discovered this. Um, this is called Asset Export. Um, you want to click that. Um, and we're going to go ahead and select all of our logos, and then we are going to drag them there. Then it separates them all. They this is the reason that they have to be grouped together. So then I'm going to go in and name them all. Um, so we'll do our obvious here. So I'm going to um, call this yarn. Uh, let's do a T Y U the yarn underground. Um, <clears throat> then we'll do circle, and then two color or maybe let's just call that blue and then I copy it and I'm going to do that to all of the circles Then I make sure that they're all named. Um, I name them the same thing with their varying different colorways. And then we're going to go to our export settings here. And what we want them, we want would be a, a PNG. I usually do a four times scale, um, depending on how large my artboard is. Um, for this one, yeah, four times scale is probably fine. Um, same with JPEG. And then um, SVG is gonna be our vector options. So we wanna make sure that we do that too. Um, we are going to group all of these or grab all of them, make sure they're all highlighted, export, and we will go into, make sure they're in the right folder, just call this logos, and I just dump them all in the same folder and then I organize them. So then this is awesome. It just exports all of the different file types that you need, um, and it's pretty super rad. So. Okay, so um, once our export is done, we will go into our logos folder here, um, and then I just create different folders for each type. I just... Okay, then you can just go grab, so any of our white JPEGs, those are trash um, because white does not show up on a white background. JPEGs always have a white background. So go ahead and get rid of any of the JPEGs that say white. Okay. Then these JPEGs, we will grab and drag into our JPEG folder. PNGs. Man, I used to always have to export these out individually. So this is such a blessing. And they're all in there, all tidy ready to go. Booyah. See? Yay. Okay. I am going to put these together in a brand board for her next. Um, and then, um, I have some other work on this same client that I want to do some follow-up videos. Um, but yeah, that was fun, a fun little rebrand there. So Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed it and learned a little bit about how to maintain brand integrity. Um, I feel like all of these logo styles are going to just really complement her existing brand and the way that she's already using it. And I think that as um, they're going to be a lot easier, a little bit bolder to see, and then we can figure out ways to incorporate uh, her existing uh, illustration as well so that way we can kind of be pulling that into all the imagery and stuff um yeah okay that's all i got for you thank you so much see you later